Hey there guys and welcome back to another video here at Top Tier Garage. It's nice having you back. Today we're going to be looking at the five ways you can make your five drawer tool cart from Harbor Freight more useful and practical on many different levels. Let's go. Nice. your tool cart a lot more practical is actually having it put together first. If you already have that part done, congratulations. You know how much of a pain in the ass it is to put this monster together on your own without scratching almost every single side of the box. If you're watching this and it's still in a box in your garage, best luck to you. You're going to need it. Uh, maybe bribe a friend to come over for a little while, help you out. But once it's all put together, you're going to want to rip it all back apart again. Why you may ask? Because you're gonna to wanna to make a trip back to the store and pick up two more of these swivel casters to replace the two rigid ones. When rolling it around, it's hard to get it into the exact position that you want it to be in, but with four swivel casters moving this thing around, positioning on them can be easy as can be. Here's a snapshot of the casters, and they'll be on the screen, and there'll also be a link in the description below. This way to change the the two rigid casters on this cart is to flip the whole tool cart on its side, find yourself an impact, and then slap a half inch ratchet on it. It is a carriage bolt on the other side, so you don't need to worry about holding it too much, and then just start zipping them off. Before we dive into the next mod, if you don't mind dropping a like or even subscribing to Top Tier Garage, it really helps me out. It keeps me motivated to bring you guys new content each and every week. I'm on the road to 100 subs and I'd like for you guys to take along for the ride. Now on to the next mod. The next mod on this list is something that may not be for everyone. How many times have you reached to the center of your tool cart's drawer and pulled realizing that all these tool carts have these little plastic locking tabs on the side of the drawer that you need to hold to release the drawer? way too many times, at least for me. Now I'm about to show you a way to get rid of this nuisance at the cost of possibly dumping your toolbox if you decide to take a corner way too fast. If you open your drawer and look at the back side of, the, of it, you'll see a small black plastic rivet. It's plastic so you can just drill it out and then the whole entire plastic mechanism should slide out of the drawer. But remember, this way is a lot more permanent than just bypassing them like I'm about to show you now. If you want to do a more temporary bypass on this plastic lever, all you need to do is find yourself a wooden dowel. Any thickness will work, but it has to be about a half inch long. So if you cut it and insert it in between the lever and the base, the spring pressure will keep the dowel in place so there's no need to worry about it falling down. But you have to remember that if you reach over and pull on this plastic handle, out of pure habit, the wooden dowel will fall out due to gravity and then do a magic trick and disappear forever, just like all of your 10 mil sockets. At Harbor Freight, you can pick up this small assortment of fluted dowel pins. I paid $1.99 for them. The link will be in the description below. So if you decide to go ahead and roll this around the shop with the drawers full, you do have the possibilities of the drawers opening. And then before you know it, it's on its side and all of your drawers are all bent to shit. So take my warning and be careful because nothing makes a person more mad than damaging your toolbox and playing a thousand piece pickup all at the same time. I to energize this little cart. Harbor Freight sells color coded power strips just for the toolboxes and rollers carts, which is super awesome, but you're gonna pay for it. The five outlet, two USB goes for about 30 bucks and with the 20% off coupon, you can knock the price down a little bit but I do have to give them credit. In the store, they were built super tough. The all metal housing, and you can mount it anywhere in the cart because of the back is magnetic. The power strip was designed to go across the side of the legs, and it doesn't seem out of place at all. If you want true mobile power, 
what you can do is you can throw a car battery underneath the cart and then use one of Harbor Freight's many different inverters to power all your stuff without being worried about finding a wall plug. I wouldn't suggest using any corded power tools off these inverters unless you go with the expensive ones because the corded tools often pull 10 amps or 1200 watts on startup. But if you're looking to power your power tool batteries and keep them charged and also your laptop plugged in, I would suggest the 400 watt continuous and 800 peak inverter for $30. Link in the description. Next mod, which is absolutely necessary, and that is the folding side tray that goes on the side of your toolbox and gives you a spot to put your laptop or work on anything that your little heart desires. You can add these to both sides of the toolbox if needed, but that might be a tad bit overkill. This tray is about 18 inches long and 16 inches wide, so it gives you about two square feet of workspace. The tray is foldable so that when you're done for the day, you can fold it down so it takes up a smaller footprint when the space in the garage is absolutely necessary. There's also a few different mods that you can do to the side tray, and I plan on making a future mod video about it. The next and final mod, which is only cosmetic, but that is the chrome door lips, or whatever they're called. I'm personally not a fan of chrome and like black a lot more. These little covers slip off pretty easily, and it only takes a few minutes to take them all off. All off, you can scuff them up a little bit if you want, and then paint them with some high gloss plastic paint. You have to make sure the paint that you pick can bond with plastic, otherwise you have to use a primer. Once they're all dry, you can pop them all back on, making sure that you don't bend them too much because you risk cracking the cover and the paint. And I'm sure getting these little covers separately would be a huge hassle. You see, now doesn't that look so much better? You can even take it further by taking on every single chrome bolt on this and painting it, but that's a project for another day. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed the content and remember to drop a like or comment what your favorite mod was or if I left one out. Thanks for watching.